Hi, welcome back. Part two of the December 12th, 2022 stream. We're going to be playing some classic fighting games for the rest of the evening. Oh yeah. Starting with, I mean, what could be more classic? Street Fighter 2. In particular, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. So this particular version I'm playing here is courtesy of the Capcom Generations Volume 5 disc for the Sega Saturn. So in terms of arcade accurate versions of this game, this is, I think, the best that I have available. Definitely a step up from the SNES or Genesis versions. Pretty ar pretty close to arcade perfect. Plus, I get to use my Saturn arcade stick with this. That's another plus. Troop, welcome back. What can be said about Street Fighter 2 that hasn't already been said? One of the most significant games of all time. You win. Completely established the benchmark for an entire genre of gaming. Massive title. And has been released in Probably more versions, more ports than maybe any other game ever made. Round one. I'd actually be curious to know. Has any game ever been ported or released as many times as Street Fighter 2? Probably not. This thing, gave me, this thing got some really baffling ports back in the day. I mean, obviously the SNES and Genesis ones are fine, but there was a version of this on the ZX Spectrum. There was a version of this on the Commodore, I think. The Spectrum version actually begins with a warning that this game may not match the quality as pictured in the manuals or box art. It's pretty incredible. Come on, Honda. No! <laughs> yeah, it's a bathhouse, all right. Round three. Fight. <laughs> Interested though in getting set up with Fight Game. Very much on board with that idea. You win. Just need to get a PC fight stick. My standards aren't that high. Like I, I mean, I'm not playing with a bad stick. I'm playing with the Hori Fighting Stick SS for the uh, the Sega Saturn which is a great stick. Reveal. This thing was made in like 1996. It's probably older than some of you guys are. And it feels great. Got it shipped no. directly from One. Japan. Fight.
messing around when it came to this game's AI. Part of the guy who plays fourth, SFT Turbo Evo, Minigia, <laughs> DSP, S. I didn't know the Neo Geo version sucked though. You think that would be like arcade perfect though? Just the hardware. Just some kind of like 40 chess intentional subterfuge via Capcom trying to sink the SNK machine. like the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? These <laughs> little portraits are so funny. Like, it's the guy. Interesting dial. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting more and more into fighting games as I get older. I guess it's just like the immediacy of the gameplay, you know what I mean? There's no bullshit, it's just... From the second you're in control, everything is available to you. The Darkstalkers? Why, yes I am! In fact, Darkstalkers 3 will be one of the games I'll be playing later on. A vampire Savior depending on how you refer to it. You lose. I have to turn the difficulty down a little. I'm getting smoked here. Round two. I'm getting teabagged by Plonka. That was an AI. From 1992 doing that. Turn this down a notch. It's too crazy. Nine Sonic Boom. What am I doing? Brazil. Yeah, I'm basically gonna be playing Round through one fight. Could be mostly the Capcom games. Fight. Chronologically. Fight. I can't decide if I want to let Blanca just kick my ass or not. Yeah, kill me, Blanca. Do it. You lose. Morgan being so culturally relevant today is really testing how good our character two. designs. Fight. Yeah. Top notch. Kill me, Blanca. Kill me. You You know what I would like to see? I'd like to see Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and 2 get ported Nine. to Steam. Eight. Seven. Hold on, Mike. One. They did put on, there's some of those Capcom fighting collections though on the modern hardware, including Steam, which is good. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and, you know, Ultimate MVC 3, I think is pretty underrated. It still gets a little bit of rep. Oh yeah, classic. But it was never as big as the other games. But that was mine. That was the one I was really into. 
my PC3. All right, look at this. So it was getting smoked so quickly on two stars. <laughs> we'll take it down to one. God. There you go. Ouch. by the way. So here's a bit of uh, hardcore plagiarism as far as music goes. So Ken's theme here. Go ahead and lick up the cheap trick, Mighty Wings. And that's just the song. That's where this song came from. It's from the Top Gun soundtrack. I think it would have ended up as Guile's theme, but... Nope. You know what that reminds me of, Mouse? I'm honestly kind of surprised we never ended up with a Souls character. In Smash Bros. I'd seem like it would have been a no-brainer. You know. Aina. They did get... You know, some characters that... Round had one. very little, if not, you know, a singular representation on Nintendo hardware. Like Bayonetta, or Cloud, you know. How many Nintendo systems have they been on? Win. Who would they put in Solar? It would be it either be yeah, just chosen undead, which would be the elite knight armor. So basically Oscar. Oscar of Astora. Or yeah, him or Solar. I think in terms of like representing the game, you know, the series, those two are the obvious choices. Sigmire would probably fit in better visually, but I don't think he's as good as a, like, immediately, like, Hey, I recognize that guy! It's definitely either the Elite Knight or Solaire. Choking the chicken back there. I always thought that was funny. Yes! No, it definitely wouldn't be Artorius. Although, Artorius would probably have the best moveset out of these guys for a Smash Bros. game. But I don't think he has the recognition. But then again, you have all these Fire Emblem characters. Do they have recognition? I don't think so. You look at the majority of the, you know, roster in Smash Ultimate. Most of these guys are like, even people who aren't into video games can recognize. But then you got the Fire Emblem guys, it's the Xenoblade guy or guys or whatever. So I guess there would be some precedent, but yeah. Anyway. Basically pondering a hypothetical here. You win. Fall Knight would be cool with the skins from the Knights of Super Games. <laughs> yeah, that would be. Although, considering Sony has the rights to Demon Souls, you wouldn't get the food inside. But yeah, you could have if it's just the Bandai Namco stuff. You could have Elite Knight set, From Knight set, a Fire Link set. And then, yeah, maybe Sigmire or Notorious, sure. You know what Smash really needed, though, was Goku. We needed Goku. We needed Bomberman. And not as a trophy, as a playable character. As Goemon, again, not just a trophy or a me costume, a playable character. 
This guy had huge representation for several of your game consoles. Massive. Oh my god, my car! I'm having car troubles, IRL. I'm trying to sell this real POS I've had for a few years now. India! The thing is in absolute decrepit, decrepit condition. And I listed it on Craigslist for $850. No responses whatsoever. That's not true. I got one response. I got one very strange response two days ago. You know what he asked me? He said, hey, are the tires the 18 inch or the 17 inch? And I said, they're the 17 inch. You know, it came in a few different styles, you know, trim levels or whatever, this car. So it's the 17 inch. And he said, oh, okay, uh, I'm all set then. Thanks. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to sell this vehicle, which I paid $9,000 for in 2016 for $350 to a scrapyard. Aren't cars great? Round two. Hey, is there anything else on the planet you can buy that depreciates in value by 25%? when you take it outside of 50 yards of where you purchased it? They're so annoying. Oh, it's like psyching me out. He's not even that hard of an opponent. Damn elephants. India. Change gears here. I can't play as boxer. What am I doing? Round two. Fight. those projectiles. Oh. I 
You guys don't know what Rob is? A robotic operating buddy. Nine, fight! It's actually pretty interesting. He was like the Trojan horse for the NES in the United States. So Atari had burned so many bridges with the 2600 in the whole video game crash that lots and lots of retailers were not willing to stock video game systems. So even though Nintendo had demonstrated success in Japan with the Famicom, you know, the Japanese name for the NES, all of these US retailers were very skeptical in terms of actually putting on shelves because of what happened with the 2600. All these guys left, you know, holding the bag, so to speak. So Rob was conceived as, no, no, it's not a video game system. It's a, you know, it's a toy. It's an entertainment system. So him being packaged with the initial batch of NES systems in the United States, kind of functioned like a Trojan horse in a way, where all these retailers were more open to the idea of, you know, stocking video game systems again. And he did it. And the NES went on to become incredibly successful, and the video game industry went on to be one, you know. Anyway, right, this path of history went on to become what we all know it became. He's actually a pretty important little guy. The stage is nuts! You lose! Alright, round three. If I lose, we're moving on to the next game here. Round three! Fight! Gotta change the strats a little bit for Dalsim. A little less passively. A little more passively, I should say. Yeah, easy. No sweat. This is really cool. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, there's all these, you know, these things that they had to consider going into the market. And they're really successful. Had they not done that, had they not got, you know, bundled Rob with it, the history of video games may have been very, very different. funny looking at the square stuff in Smash, isn't it? Clouds coming to Smash Bros! It's just him, one stage, and two songs ripped directly from the game. No covers, no reinterpretations, nothing. The business side of Square is monumentally screwed. Plenty of good creatives still there, but from the business side of things, they're a mess. You lose. <sighs> All right. Give us one more shot as the boy Ken. to the next game after that. Round one, fight!
pixel of your health. Yes. Yeah, it's strange. One of the biggest franchises in gaming. And here's what we give you. God. Yeah, the Kid Icarus port, I saw that. That's very interesting. I never played that game on the 3DS. But I'm a big fan of Sakurai. I love his YouTube channel. I watch every video I believe. You win! Yeah. We're on something new. That's a great point. I mean... This guy has made a couple Kirby games, Kid Icarus, Uprising, and then a bunch of Smash games, which are all good, but so you imagine the potential untapped. I, I can't wait to see what he does next. design decisions. Uh, that's the whole thing. He, there's a lot of elements that he's incorporating, which they're not like these really complex things. They're just these basic concepts, which it's like, I'm not saying they're like, like, oh yeah, so obvious, because clearly they're not, but it's great that he's able to present this stuff in such like a clear, concise, and understandable way. I just got smoked by he Honda. That's fine. I think it's about time for the next game. Ouch. Let's play another Street Fighter title. Move forward a little bit in time here. But yeah, this is basically all going to be on the Saturn. Saturn ports. And Kulta, hey, how's it going? Do I play a lot of retro games? Uh, it's kind of like 50-50, I'd say. I'm all over the place. I'd say like 50% of this channel is related to from software stuff, Souls games. And then the other half is just, you know, kind of gaming in general, which usually means quite a bit of retro games. Yeah. Basically, it's just the stuff I like. Yeah, jumping forward a generation here in technology from Street Fighter 2 to Street Fighter Alpha 3 or Zero 3 as it's known in Japan. Street Fighter Zero 3. The reason I cover so much soul stuff, I mean retro stuff, is because I think there's still a lot to learn and appreciate about these games, you know? Like, I'm not... I try as hard as possible to avoid the nostalgia glasses thing, but just in terms of, like, immediacy and 
I don't know. Just come some game design concepts. I think there's still like a lot to learn from these older games. Select your character. Select your fighting style. My favorite Souls game. It's tough. That's a tough one. Probably either Demon Souls, the original, or Dark Souls 1 of 3. But I I love all of FromSoft's output the last decade. Everything they've done, I am very much into. Yeah, the nostalgia video was kind of... I didn't really... It's kind of like on the fence. Not in terms of how I feel about it, but... It's kind of like saying like, yeah, there's a lot of things to appreciate about older games, but... We shouldn't inherently, you know, kind of ignore things newer titles are trying. Which, yeah, I agree with, but... I think you maybe went a little soft on some kind of modern... You know... Modern game philosophies. Uh, just like, here's one right out of the gate, an easy one. It used to be that you would buy a video game and you could be rel you could be reasonably assured that it was content complete and bug tested. That you weren't going to be forced to be charged for pieces of content which should have been in the original game. There were no microtransactions, no cosmetic DLCs. You weren't basically functioning as a beta tester. You know what I mean? That's just one thing. But the amount of money involved. I mean, this is a huge subject, so there's a lot to talk about. So I'll save that for another time. Cool, if I watched the Demon Souls remake our critique video and instantly subbed, it's really good. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. That's a... Uh, it's a very important game to me. A lot of... A lot of... I have a lot of feelings about Demon Souls. I still find that it is very, very much underrated in just kind of like a general discussion in gaming. People attribute Dark Souls as, you know, the progenerator of all of these, like, concepts we're seeing a lot of nowadays, but in reality, a lot of these, like, gameplay elements were born in Demon Souls. You know, Dark Souls reutilized a lot of them, but it had a bigger amount of exposure because, I mean, just the fact that it was multi-platform instead of being a PS3 exclusive. <laughs> So you're like, this is the Dark Souls of platforming, this is the Dark Souls of strategy games, this is the Dark Souls of whatever, dating sims. You win. It's, it's just the visibility of Dark Souls. You know, what did Dark Souls do differently from a structural standpoint other, you know, that Demon Souls didn't do? The interconnected world, basically. And I love both of them, like I said, I love DS1, but... For me, when I'm grading anything, I tend to look at the progenitors, you know, the people who... Or the people or things that were there first. And Demon Souls was that thing. The general, you know, gameplay structure, the atmosphere and art direction, the asymmetrical multiplayer, the message system, the blood stains, that's all Demon Souls. And yeah, right now, you know, Demon's Souls, you can still buy on PSN and play it on the PS3, but how much longer are people going to be able to buy PS3s? Hey, yeah. Get ready, fighter! Go for it, man! It's like really the number one complaint I have. It's like, yeah, I really don't like most of the art direction decisions that the Demon Souls remake went with, but, you know, if I had the option, or if I knew that the general public at large had the option of playing Demon Souls 
equally as accessible as the remake, I would I wouldn't care. You know, who cares? I'll let them decide. But going forward, it's just like Here's Demon Souls by Blue Point. Yeah, here it is. This is Demon Souls. You know what I mean? It's a similar thing now with Silent Hill 2, where people can say, if you don't like it, just play the original. And it's like, I would certainly love to. You want to put the original on the PS5? On Steam? On Xbox? Oh, wait, you didn't. The most recent official release of Silent Hill 2 was the HD collection was an extremely botched, messed up port. And that was on the PS3 and 360. And you can't play that on Modern Hardware, Modern Hardware anywhere, so it's a moot point. Anyway, you get, where I'm, you get what I'm saying. It's not the same as movies. Because with movies, typically, the originals are still accessible. You know what I mean? It's like when that remake of The Thing came out in 2011. Excuse me. It's not... It wasn't presented as a remake, but for all intents and purposes, it's a remake. Same plot structure, same setting, same elements of the storyline. But... You walk into yeah, Best Buy, or you go on Amazon Prime or whatever. If you want to watch the original thing, there it is. Just as accessible as the new one. Go for broke. And that's the big difference. And back to Street Fighter Alpha 3. This is one of my favorite pieces of music in the game. Really nice. Ever played OG Demon Souls? Yeah, definitely try it. Either on PS3 or it emulates, yeah, like Troop said, it emulates very, very well on uh, if you have any kind of half decent PC, it will play just fine on RPCS3. And when you set RPC3 RPCS3 up, there are actually patches that you can set up. They're built right into the emulator. You just right click the right click the game within the little library window. And it will automatically download these patches for you that you can, you know, enable or disable at your own choosing. And there's one for 60 FPS. So, playing the original Demon Souls at 4K 60 FPS is actually very easy to do. And I encourage everyone to try it. But even playing it at, you know, 720p 30 FPS on the PS3 is still perfectly fine. This is still a great experience. Yeah, Bloodborne. It's bizarre, isn't it? Like, we've remastered and remade Last of Us now twice, but you gotta buy a PS4 if you want to play Bloodborne and the DLC. You can subscribe to PS Now and stream Bloodborne and play it on a PC, but for some bewildering reason, it doesn't actually include the old Hunter's DLC, which is just astounding considering that, I mean, it's a pretty big part of the game. And in my opinion, it's probably the single best bit of DLC that From Software has done. Ever. But yeah, it hurts. Bloodborne stuck on the PS4. These low frame rates. I've been tempted, I won't lie, I've been tempted to buy a PS4 Pro and hack it just so I can play Bloodborne uh, 60 FPS. If you install Homebrew software, you can actually mod it to play it that way. Which is pretty awesome. It's your time! Fate is 
Actually, no, this is my favorite piece of music in the game. I think generally this game's soundtrack is not as... I think Street Fighter 2 is pretty much unanimously like, yeah, that's the best soundtrack in the series. But this game has some cool tracks, and this one is one of my favorites. This animation is incredible. This game is so good. The gameplay, the aesthetics, the music. Yes, Malice, yes! The character designs are awesome. Look at her animation. Gorgeous. Overkill. She mentioned the four guys throwing LG releasing an OLED twenty seven. 1440p, 240... Oh, 240Hz PC monitor next year. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So my... My two setups for gaming... You guys know this, the regulars. I've got... An LG C1 4K 120Hz TV for the more modern stuff, which is astounding. OLED is a game changer. Beautiful. But finally a competitor to CRTs. But then, yeah, playing here, the retro stuff, playing on uh, PVM, Sony 20L5. But that, that, uh, that LG... It's tempting. It's tempting sometimes. It's like, okay, just go all in on that. Move all the systems in and just play them over the OSSC because a lot of qualities of the OLED are back to getting back to CRT quality. Overall contrast and black levels, response times, lack of ghosting in motion. Blew it. Big opening there, Brokers. Don't look at the cloud gaming in its current state. Yeah, neither do I. I don't think bandwidth speeds generally are there yet. I don't like the idea of having, you know, input lag happening over an internet connection. I mean, for, especially for something like Bloodborne, anything other than like an RPG, that seems un completely unacceptable. Not to mention stuff happening with video compression. That's just sad. I don't like that at all. No, this is uh, the last Street Fighter game for the evening. I'll be moving on to some other stuff after this. Street Fighter, they some sick animation. Dark System Wars. Yeah, Red Earth. Yeah, you're right. Those are really nice. It's pretty crazy that Red Earth never got a port to any of the home consoles. Although, from what I understand, it was a part of that recent Capcom collection on the modern systems, which is pretty cool. It's definitely a pretty underloved game on their backlog. Their catalog, their catalog, I should say. Yeah, 
it was burned in a meme or what? It's something abused about PC usage. Yeah, so I use that LG C1 for PC usage, and here's what I do. While I'm working, and I have, you know, a lot of like the static Windows elements on screen, I just turn down the OLED pixel brightness down as far as I reasonably can. And then I utilize, you know, like I go full screen when I can to avoid as much of the static elements as possible. Like the TV has a lot of built-in things to, you know, prevent that, but I still try and be as safe as possible. And then when I switch to an SDR game on that, you know, PC input profile, I just turn the OLED, you know, pixel brightness up and it looks great. If I watch a movie, I switch to the cinema setting which is basically for every single input you have several customized kind of um, profiles you can switch between and then if i'm watching something on like my 4k blu-ray uh, Blu player you know that just by default has its own cinema setting so that, you know just kind of set it and forget it and on top of that stuff, you know, like the the TV has this thing where if it's been on for a while, you turn it off as like this built-in pixel refresher thing where the screen will turn off, but in the background it will do some kind of, you know, funky voodoo technology, which I don't, which I don't completely understand to refresh the pixels. There's that. So it's it's getting less and less of a problem. I'm not too worried about it. And on top of all of those other things, uh, when I bought the TV, I spent an extra 150 for the Best Buy uh, Geek Squad thing, which includes pixel burning for the warranty. So anytime within the next two years, if I notice any dead pixels, I can get a new panel for free. I'm not worried about it. Oh. One more match. So having to do a little bit of, you know, daily housekeeping when I'm switching between the different utilities for this, you know, television is a very small price to pay for the increase in quality. It's absolutely astounding compared to my last video. Games, movies, anything. Watching stuff on that is a dream. I feel like a lot of the time when you upgrade with technology, you know, you're impressed by it with a couple for a couple weeks and then you kind of get used to it. With that TV, it's almost every time I, you know, I play a new game or I watch a movie on it that I hadn't yet watched on that display, I'm continuously impressed. So, I'm very happy with it.
So you have an Elden Ring review. Shall we check it out after the stream? Did you enjoy the game out overall? Yes, absolutely. Fantastic game. I don't think it's my favorite From Software game, but I still think it's nine out of ten. At the very least, I loved it. Personally, I feel like From Software, or I should say, maybe even more specifically, Hidetaka Miyazaki. But yeah, From Software's output in the last decade is comparable to something like Led Zeppelin in their prime. You know what I mean? Or it's like a band coming together. Or any kind of like group of people and just firing maximum on all cylinders for like a decade and putting out top-notch piece of material after top-notch piece of material. It's great. Surprise Blizz hasn't put out a casual friendly ultra polish fighting game yet. Yeah, that's a good point. Nobody play. Yeah, in terms of like Western fighting games, it's basically just Mortal Kombat. Which I think at this point is pretty good. The last few games have been pretty solid, but there's definitely room for competition. I think the modern Mortal Kombat's biggest problem is just like at a glance, the really stiff animation for the characters. Like, it's really, really bad. It's really behind stuff like Tekken. The 3D Street Fighters, it's way, way behind. You win! And then, you know, more specifically, I'd say, I really wish... I mean, I, I feel like I bring this up every other stream, but... The modern MK games feel like they've lost a lot of that personality from the other titles, where it's just, just like, every single character is like, an insane, you know, murderous maniac, you know what I mean? It's just like, they're nuts, and the world that they exist in is just this killer be killed, you know, insanity. Reminiscent of the kind of, like, 80s you know, Hong Kong kung fu movies that they undoubtedly drew a lot of inspiration from. Nowadays, it's like, you know... The storyline's like Jax trying to like reconnect with his, his estranged daughter, or whatever. Johnny Cage trying to reconnect with Sonya Blade. Uh, I don't know about that. Get ready, fighter! Go for it, man! <laughs> I've seen a lot of statements like, worst Souls game ever. Yeah, definitely not. It's definitely not the worst Souls game ever. I said this in the review and in several videos since then, but I think Elden Ring's biggest problem is there's a 
kind of a sense of, you know, been there, done that sometimes with certain, you know, world and presentation elements, some of the bosses, some of the storyline things. It's just, you know, there. I won't spoil anything, but there are just certain things where it's like, yeah, this is starting to feel a little, you know, familiar. But as a complete package, there's no doubt it's a great game. Nine. And the unique element that the game has is the big open world, which I think is undoubtedly the best example of that to come out of gaming in the last decade. The sensation of just exploring and not just seeing things interesting from an art design direction, but just unique encounters and scenarios. Hey, come on! Stand up! Face it straight! I don't get it was really captivating to me. Yeah, she's fun. For Ken, she's actually the second to last fight. Just her and then Bison. More try. Excuse me, glad you watched me see that. Yeah, that's yeah, fun. One more try. Select your character. Select your fighting style. Does the Elven Ring need a quest log? I don't know. It wouldn't hurt. I don't know if it needs like a traditional summary kind of quest log, but maybe just kind of like a journal where you would see the interactions you've had and the dialogue. So when characters reference, like, meeting you at a certain place, you could double-check that. I think that would be a good compromise, considering the size of the world. I don't think it would have been right for the older Souls titles, but... Something like... You know, Lied said to meet me here. And then, you know, trust the player to then look at the map and look for that place on the map. That can't be fine. Yeah, basically Morrowind style. Morrowind continuing to be a, the framework for the ultimate open world game since 2001. to New Vegas. One of my favorite games in the series. Probably would rank them Fallout 1, New Vegas, Fallout 2, and then the rest. It's a great game. Yeah. 
Yeah, New Vegas is quality stuff. The last time I played it, I modded it so much that the game was crashing like every 30 minutes, but it was worth it. The insanity of the scenarios I had going on. I was playing as a T-800 from Terminator, and I had a mod that added a rideable motorcycle, which was extremely janky, but hilarious. And then all sorts of weapons and new quests and... Ah oh, man, PC gaming and like modding Bethesda games that like, goes together like bread and, bread and butter. Always a fun experience. Yeah, New Vegas is very good. Okay, last stage here in Alpha 3. Hey, come on! Stand up! Face his strength! <laughs> 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 the ground while he has a supercharge and then jump and get smashed by it. It's really not too bad. I think he's actually less aggressive than Sakura. That for an ender. You win. Wrap up the playthrough. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that's how it's open world managed to effectively guide the player's path without failing to restrict drift. Yeah, I agree. That's also about variety. Fall three example. Yeah, kill make sorry. Yeah, exactly. Skyrim. They just go unconscious and kind of fall through the knees for a sec. I mean, again, Morrowind, perfect. You kill them, and if they were important to the main storyline, you get that pop-up that says something like... With the severing... With the death of this character, fate has been severed or something, and you persist in a doomed world, reset or load a state to continue. That's fantastic. 
it communicates to you, yeah, yes, this was an important character and that you need to reload your save if you want to actually attempt to complete the main storyline. And it manages to do so in a way that fits the world and, you know, comes across pretty effectively. Perfect. Like, I don't think you have to worry about any player who manages to be, you know, accomplish that in the game and then disregards it and then complains about not being able to finish the game and then like wants a refund or something or is going to leave like a negative review on Amazon or make like a mean Twitter post like it's fine don't worry about it <laughs> you can even be straight up like blunt like don't even have it be wrapped up in you know di di diegetic game language just say Hey, just so you know, by killing this character, you can't finish the storyline anymore. Cool? Yes? No? You want to load a save? Hey, Alan. Basically, it just comes down to trusting that your player is not a complete moron. And... I don't think that most people playing video games are complete morons. I don't think so. I think you can have a little bit more faith in your average show. Street Fighter Zero Three. I think if you manage to get into a situation in Skyrim where you find yourself against the clear, you know, head of a some kind of major faction, and you decide to punch him in the face, that maybe there should be some kind of ramifications for that, but. That's just me. Anyway, moving on to the next game. Another classic fighter, one that came up earlier. Let's play Vampire Savior, AKA Dark Stalkers 3. One of the pinnacles of Capcom's 2D sprite art. If the Saturn decides to cooperate, that is. Don't make me play Hang On. I've been wondering a lot about what to do with a lot of my physical older games recently. I'll just reset it. I mean, specifically, like, you know, I've got these, like, Saturn games, right? Just as an example, I bought all these Japanese Saturn games because I've got a Japanese Saturn. And Japanese Saturn games are significantly less expensive. Uh, hold on. They're significantly less expensive than their American counterparts. Like, major, 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 major. Uh, here's an example. Saturn Bomberman. Japanese copy of that, run you about 30 bucks. American copy of that, probably 200 or so. What the hell's going on here? Hold on, guys. Sorry. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I've got all these physical games. I have a physical copy of Vampire Savior. I have the disc. But because I installed this ODE in my Saturn so I can play all these other games, I can't use it anymore. All right, hold on a sec. What the hell's going on? And bust out the screwdriver. <laughs> this Saturn, I've done a lot of work on. I installed this ODE, but I also had to swap out several other parts to get it going. should work. There we go. B 
But yeah, if you want to play 2D fighting games, the Saturn's your system. I mean, it's got plenty of cool games, but for all the classic 2D fighters, they're all here. Hard to beat. Vampire Saviors. Vampire Survivors. Yes, yeah, two different games. <laughs> so, Survivors is the big indie game that's really hot on Steam right now that also has all the plagiarized artwork, right? Seems a little quiet. Just double check. Yeah, how's this sound? Should I turn this up at all? Sounds good. Alright. Yeah, Vampire Savior, aka Darkstalkers 3. Awesome game. Amazing sprite art. Awesome soundtrack. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in Street Fighter 6. Not really crazy about you know, some of the new characters bringing in, but, you know, trying to be open-minded. I don't think they're bad, it's just, I kind of feel like I'm starting to uh, lose touch <laughs> in some ways, you know what I mean? But it's all good, as long as the classics are there. <laughs> Quiet! 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 Yeah, I want to get it. I said this earlier, but I, I am really interested in getting a 2D fighting stick. Not a 2D. I am interested in getting a fighting stick for the PC. If anyone has any specific recommendations, I'm very interested to hear as to which and why. So I'm really into Tekken 7 on PC, but I really want to get into Fight Kate and play a lot of the classic fighters like this online for the nice, you know, new modern fight stick. That'd be really nice. It's hard for me to go back after getting this stick for the Saturn. Playing fighting games on this thing is... It's hard to go back to a control pad. Any plans on streaming Dark Souls in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the most recent Souls stream I did... I think probably was Dark Souls 1. It was either Dark Souls 1 or doing like Dark Souls 3 invasions, but yeah, definitely soul streams. Absolutely. Shit at fighting games? In what way? I feel like there's some core ba basics that are pretty broadly translatable across the fighting game experience, whether they be 2D or 3D. Just like the fundamentals, you know? Once you get those down, you're better than at least 25% of the people playing, maybe 50%. Yeah. 
backgrounds are so insane. Nice. So it sure does, my friend. Gorgeous. Yeah, keyboards are solid choice for fighting games. I mean, just in terms of... Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I've been watching some Tekken 7 tournament stuff lately, and you do see some players occasionally, you know, at a high tournament, uh, tournament level. You know, I'm talking like top eight, you know, in a tournament, playing with a keyboard. So that's fine. If that's how you want to play, that's totally cool. Same with it with controllers, just whatever works best for you. Let's have some great colors going on in this stage. This huge blood red moon. Cool sands of the desert. Really well done. from Golden Eye all over again. Baron Samiti. your own stick. Yeah, probably a good choice. Get the Sanwa stuff. I honestly love this Saturn stick though. If I could mod this to just have like a USB out that I could swap between the different systems and then an actual PC. You know, this is one of the best stages in the game. But yeah, if I could mod this stick I probably would be happy. What do I think about Dark Souls 2? I think Dark Souls 2 is a great game. If I had to rank the FromSoft games the last, you know, 15 years or whatever, or everything, you know, from Demon's Souls forward, I probably would put it at the bottom, but that's not a bad thing in terms of, like, games at large, because I would still much rather play Dark Souls 2 than most games, you know what I mean? It's like if all these other games are like a 10 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10, Dark Souls 2 is like an 8.5 out of 10. So it's something like that, it's just like the philosophy of enjoying it for what it is versus what it isn't, you know? Because I got like a, I saw a YouTube comment on one of these videos. Oh shit, did the game just freeze? Oh no. 
I think the game just froze. No! That's really too bad. It was like the second to last stage. Okay, well, roll with the punches, I suppose. Let me ask you guys, should I move on to... the next game? Or play some more of that one? Play more Vampire Savior or play... Samurai Spirits, which is, I can't even remember what the US title for those games are. Samurai Showdown 4, I think it would be. Samurai Showdown 4, aka Samurai Spirits, Amakusa Kurin. <laughs> Yeah, the elevator of Volcano, that's the uh, the talking point, isn't it? When we talk about Dark Souls 2. All they had to do was make the elevator go down. <laughs> it made perfect sense. An incredibly minute change. But, oh well. But, if you take in the supposed meta element of Dark Souls 2, where the plot is your character is losing their memory and their ability to you know, maintain memories then some of the weird transitions between the you know the different areas uh, maybe it makes sense so there you go yeah samurai spirits is samurai showdown four basically so you can play that or go back to dark stalkers three AKA Vampire Savior. All these games which have different titles between the Japanese and Western versions. Are we gonna play Street Fighter the movie? You know, forget all these good games. DS2 original version or Scholar? Uh, Scholar. Uh, for one reason alone, if not anything else, the fact that you're able to access the weapon infusion so much sooner which gives you a much broader uh, variety of builds to be viable sooner on. But yeah, I think Scholar is pretty unanimously an improvement. The only thing that's slightly questionable about Scholar is the uh, increased amount of knights in the Iron Keep, but that's a small trade-off for what I feel is otherwise a pretty unanimous improvement. All right, one more vote. Samurai Showdown or Darkstalkers? I'm just going to slap my stick around until somebody makes a choice here. So many good games, though. The system so underrated. Darkstalkers. Dark Stalkers it is. All right, before I launch the game though, I'm just gonna do something here. A little magic trick. <sighs> Boot it up. I'll play, I'll play a little Samurai Showdown after this. I actually bought the 1 meg Saturn expansion cart just to play that. Oh, Saturn. Yeah, there's some of these SNK games on Saturn that need the 1 meg expansion cart. You would think, surely you could just use the 4 meg expansion cart and that'll work for those games. No, it has to specifically be the one meg cart. So I bought that. <sighs> Plays a different character in Dark Stalkers as well. Mix it up. So we get the start. Oh. 
you know. Not to sound like a broken record, but these are the kinds of things that seem to never happen ever, ever at all until you're streaming. In which case, they decide to all simultaneously stop working. Try this one more time. If it doesn't work, we'll move on to Samurai Showdown. Okay, Samurai Showdown it is. Sorry about that, guys. Again, not sure why that's happening, but it is. Is it because I'm, st I'm skipping the startup screen? Who knows? But I just switched the RAM cards too, so we'll play this. Or not. <laughs> oh. All right, hold on a sec. Frustrating. I just got the system recapped recently. I'll spruce up. Usually, yeah, works absolutely flawlessly, but I'll try Vampire Savior again and just swap the cards back out. going on with the Saturn. Overheating, perhaps? This sucks. I have some backup plans if this continues to fail, but frustrating, huh? Fortunately, there's no shortage of classic fighting games. What the hell is going on? Check my sensor. This is all being played off an optical drive emulator, the Fenrir. So there's no sensor, so, so to speak. Oh, this is frustrating. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm not sure what to do with the Saturn here. It really pissed me off. And try a couple more things, and then if this doesn't work, just switch to a different system. All that work you've done on this Genesis. Well, this is the Saturn, not the Genesis. The Saturn works. I mean, the Genesis works flawlessly, both of them. The Saturn here is a different story. It's a bit temperamental.
But yeah, all the stuff has been recapped. Not only does it have, you know, you either have a flash cart and the, and the, the cartridge based ones or an ODE and the optical drive based ones. They've all been recapped, so they should all be working flawlessly. But that's not the case, as we can see. So, fuck it. <laughs> Let's play a different system. Out of necessity. Sorry, guys. Really annoying. Wanted to play some more Saturn games, but that's not going to happen, apparently. So, I'll get that sorted out, but we'll switch to another system. We'll go to the real king of the 32-bit era. I usually play Tekken 2, right? We all know how much I love Tekken 2. But for change of pace, let's play some Tekken 3. And while the game boots up, I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. Thank you. 
Okay, back last. Thank you for waiting. Welcome to second three. Probably one of the most popular games in the series. I think other than Tekken 7, you know, this is probably still the biggest one, you know, in terms of overall mainstream recognition appeal or whatever. You have five seconds to name your favorite Tekken character, Kazuya. Easy. Kazuya, Martial Law, King, Heihachi. Lay Wulong. Round one. Fight! <laughs> This is a trip. I've played so much Tekken 7 in the last few weeks. Coming back to Tekken 3 here. Wow. You win. Round 2. Fight. <laughs> Yeah, Death by Degrees. I played that. Curious how it is. How's my EWGF game? Well, probably not very good because I don't know what that acronym stands for. I will say, despite the fact that I definitely prefer the overall aesthetic of Tekken 1 and 2, there's no doubt that technologically this game was a pretty massive leap over the other ones. Round two, fight. Character modeling, animation, load time. The speed of the gameplay is huge. I mean... You oh, Electric Link Godfist? Not great. <laughs> I'm definitely not a Tekken pro, that's for sure. Round one, fight! I enjoy the game, but I'm not a... I wouldn't say I'm great at it. Round two, fight! You win. This game, it happens at a pretty weird resolution. It's actually interlaced, so hopefully it's just looking good on the stream side, but... It's somewhere between 240p and 480. It's like 368i or something. Something crazy. Unusual. You win. So one of the big aesthetic differences with this game is the soundtrack. It's a lot more contemporary compared to its predecessors. Like the first two games had more of like the 80s, like, you know, martial arts movie thing going on. This is a lot more indebted to, you know, kind of like mid 90s electronica, like Prodigy, Dust Brothers, stuff like that. More like percussion based. More synthesizers versus samples. Round one, fight! Turn-based fighting game. It's like I was playing Final Fantasy VII a few months back. Round two. All those mods. Sounds cool though. 
After second two, I want to find this downgrade. How so? Good play, second two after this. I'm open to that. There's a combo. Oh yeah. You win. Naomi Hustle. Yeah, let me Google that. Round one. Fight. Gone, yeah. Oh, weirdo. Like a manga character. The odd job with second three. You gotta crouch to hit this guy. Round two. He's cool and everything, but kind of sucks to fight. You just like, can only do low attacks. You, know I mean? you get to really like utilize the mechanics of the game. Round one, fight. <laughs> Gonna kick him in the face repeatedly. Hey, speaking of indie games, has anyone checked out Signalis? I keep getting that recommended to me. Keep topic on my radar. It's like a new indie game, kind of influenced by the classic survival well, horror stuff, like PS1 specifically. It seems like because that's like the hot aesthetic right now in indie games. It's the PS1 aesthetic it seems like. <laughs> God, this sucks. Poor man's Roger. Yeah, this is terrible. Now, poor man's Alex, because Alex is the raptor with the boxing gloves. The dinosaur. Roger's the kangaroo. Final round. Fight. This piece of music here doesn't hold a candle to the classic PG track. This is why Gone was not in Tekken Tag 2 or whatever. Tekken Tag 1. It wasn't the licensing stuff, it was just the fact that he was a complete pain in the ass to fight. Great! Great. You. Get out of here, I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> Yoshimitsu. Round one. Yeah, overwhelmingly positively sounds it sounds right. I mean everyone seems to love that game. I'm definitely interested in checking it out. I can throw it up my alley. Oh. 
the Yoshimitsu. This is definitely my favorite design for Yoshimitsu. I mean, does anyone enjoy the contemporary, like, squid guy look? I think everyone probably likes this one the best. The Tekken 2 straw hat design, pretty much the, just the prototype for this design here. Very similar. I like that one too, but this one is really good. Round 2, fight! <laughs> Final round. People use. Probably not too many people associate him with Soul Calibur, considering how popular Tekken is compared to Soul Calibur. Round one, fight! <laughs> 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 Time up. Oh. You lose. <laughs> Round <laughs> fight. Oh. Oh. These games are so good. Oh, Tekken. Final round. Fight. Playing all these fighting games back to back, kind of breaking my brain a bit. Switching between mechanics and speed. And playing Contra before that. There we go. You win. Kuma. Round one. Fight. <laughs> Round two, fight! <laughs> I guess he is a bear. Final round, fight! These older wired controllers had way more rumble than the newer stuff. Like I'm playing on a, I have a, I'm playing on a Dual Shock 2 right now. Played in, uh, plugged into the PS1. Compared to basically anything now, like Dual Shock 4, Switch Pro, Xbox. Like the rumble strength of these older, I mean it's just because they were plugged in and not, you know, pulling from battery life. I'm guessing, but it's like insane. It feels like it's gonna fall out of your hands.
I remember, yeah, renting Star Fox 64 back in the day. It was like, no, no, Blockbuster, we need to include the Rumble Pack with every cartridge rented. People need to experience this. You know, getting like numb hands after playing it for 20 minutes because it was so insane. Uh, times. Yeah, this controller. It's two things. It's the strength of the motors in the first place, obviously. And being able to plug, you know, pull from a sustained power source and not batteries. But on top of that, if you can get a hold of like a relatively like newer condition controller, like I'm playing on now, experience it like it was back in the day. Because over time, any motor, you know, fades for anything. That vibration is going to get weaker. But I'm fortunate enough to be playing on some like relatively fresh hardware. Continue. Round one. Fight. Enough time spent on Kuma here. Let's wrap this up. You know, one of the other games I was considering playing tonight was going to be Police Knots. You win. A Hideo Kojima adventure game. Round two. A pretty cool concept. I mean, similar to Snatcher, but you know, you're investigating stuff, making choices. It's just there's so much reading and dialogue. You know, I'm not sure how much it would really be like worth playing live. You do get the shooting segments where you get to like actually, you know, use the Saturn gun and shoot at stuff on screen, but I like checked out a Let's Play just to see how soon it would be before like real like cool stuff started. And we're looking at like at least 30 minutes, so I'll give you guys the benefit of the doubt. Oh shit! You continue. Round one. Uh, motors are extremely resilient as far as deliveries. Yeah, I'd say in an automotive sense, sure. Or it's like, in most senses, possibly, but... In video game controllers, they definitely wear down. Round two. Fight. Kuma. You win. <sighs> Round one. I just want 
hear Ogre's music. That's my real goal. Round two. Fight. Second tag soundtrack is really nice as well. Second two and second tag. Definitely my favorite in the series. Last try. Round one. I like the other ones. I didn't turn the difficulty down here. And then it's a true ogre, which is basically the Round same track. One. Just... Fight. I'm gonna shut up. Let's just all enjoy it. Round 
Round two. Fight. <laughs> So good. Many, many gym playlists I've made since this game came out included that track. King had some moody endings. These PS1 games, for some reason. So yeah, Tekken 3, another classic fighting game. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try booting up the Saturn again and see if I can get uh, the Samurai game going. And if not, we'll go uh, on to the PS2. of Iron Fist Tournament. I wonder if the problem was it overheating. No, still messed up. That's too bad, but I'll figure it out. Oh well. So now, let me ask you guys this. Tekken 2 or Tekken Tag? Which should we move on to? Tag. Sounds good. Police knots all the way through. You don't want that. You don't want that. It's absurd, the amount of text in that game. It's too much. It might be too much for me if I was just playing it solo, not streaming it. But streaming it, it's too much. So much dialogue. You think MGS2 has too many cutscenes? Play Police Knots. Yeah, I'm bummed. It's a real shame about the Saturn here. I wanted to play Samurai Spirits. I wanted to play more Darkstalkers. And I wanted to play some Virtual Fighter 2. I don't know what the hell's going on. I mean, we're playing Street Fighter 2 and Alpha 3 just fine. And all of a sudden, problems. What am I doing? I've got the disc for Tekken 2. Police knots, full read-through. It's like a visual novel. Basically, I mean... You have the illusion of choice in that you can progress through dead-end, you know, dialogue choices in you know, whatever, you know, order you wish before the actual, you know, real game. But when it comes to actually progressing the story, you have one choice. I mean, if it were lighter on that stuff, you know, more light on its feet and letting you maybe more of those like shooting sections, because it's a cool concept to have one controller, you know, 
a traditional controller plugged in for the dialogue stuff and then you know you never know when you're gonna have to whip out the uh you know grab like the gun or whatever if you have one which fortunately i do like that's a great concept like deal with like you know threats popping up but the way the game is now it's just it seems very heavily paced is it worth playing i don't know i mean i played through snatcher a few years ago and overall, I thought it was really cool, but definitely also very text heavy, but it didn't seem as much as thoughts. Enjoy this incredible intro. Snatcher and Police Nuts, same game. Oh, uh, that's fair enough. They are very similar. It's basically the same structure. They're adventure games. Close to visual novels. They're on the line between adventure game and visual novel. They're very similar. Snatcher game is basically... Snatcher is basically... Uh, Blade Runner and Terminator ripped off. And then... Police Nuts is Lethal Weapon. And... Presumably other Hollywood stuff ripped off. Like, the main character in Snatcher is literally... Well, not literally, but it's... It's Harrison Ford in Blade Runner. It's Rick Deckard. The main character is in Police Knots. Riggs and Murtaugh. I mean, they're identical. Anyway, here we are at Tech and Tag... The next game after Tekken 3, the first Tekken game on the PlayStation 2, and a really great example of the like main focus of a lot of these fighting games switching from the arcade to the console. This game did have an arcade release, but if you look at the arcade version, it basically just looks like an expanded Tekken 3, but this PS2 version, major graphical overhaul and a lot of additional content added. Let's check it out. Playing as the boys. Oh, so many memories with this game. First PS2 game I ever got. You can imagine. Fight. Get this monolith, you know, this 2001 monolith looking console in my house. These graphics. What witchcraft is this? You win. Incredible first experience to the PS2. For sure. Major step up. Second three, as we just saw. I mean, these games came out, what, like three years apart? For a disc based game, load time's really not too bad. It's the era of Tekken before everyone started doing outrageous amounts of testosterone therapy and anabolics. Kazoo's ripped, but not like insanely so. 
Steroids come up quite a bit in my streams, don't they? And again, I, as always, I'd like to advocate for not using steroids. Don't do steroids. Don't do anabolics. <laughs> I'll tell you the reason why steroids come up in these games. It's because, for me, just the kind of guy I am, everything that I get interested in, I spend a lot of time looking into and researching and reading about, all that stuff. Whether that be you know, video games, or music, or working out. So I'm into working out, so of course I'm going to read all about working out and, you know, what's the best ways to maximize my exercise and all this stuff. And of course, if you go down that rabbit hole, you're gonna start reading about steroids. Well, that's why. But no, I don't do steroids, nor do I suggest anyone do steroids. I don't need them. You win. Am I to UFC at all? No. Yeah, my man. You win. Always my favorite king outfit. He's got the mask, but he's got you know, his casual workout t-shirt on and like his like customized Adidas Jaguar sweatpants for the left, you know, the print on the sides there. That's good. Forest and martial law. Basically indistinguishable. Probably some moveset differences from the real hardcore attacking through. But. Devil straight up goofy. Yeah. You know what the thing is? In Tekken 2, you go up against Devil, and yeah, he's not hes not quite so purple looking. But also, you're fighting him in this abstract environment full of darkness and mirrors with the spooky mirrors. You know, the spooky music. So it all comes together. It's like, yeah, I can take this guy seriously. But you're fighting him, you know, in broad daylight. <laughs> in that kind of situation, it's a little silly. Yeah. <laughs> Almost like this, getting your ass kicked by a guy on his way to the social security office. I gotta play some more Yakuza 0. Oh my god. That series is so insane. I want to try and get a few of them under my belt before the Samurai one comes out soon, which I, from what I understand, is actually like a remake of a PS3 game. It's like one of the spin-off titles.
Dude, I've not played this since the early 2000s. Tag and boost. Yeah, you can, but I basically play Tekken like an idiot savant, where occasionally I get moments of, you know, capability, but for the most part, I'm just kind of winging it. No, in all serious, I'm not sure how to do the tag moves in Tekken Tag, I won't lie. I don't play the single play. I don't play the actual fighting mode of Tekken Tag quite often. Round one, fight. Most of the time when I play Tekken Tag, for Tekken Bowl, honestly. The bowling is so good. That's what I'm gonna be doing after I finish this uh, arcade mode. I'm gonna wrap up the night with some tuck and bowl. So good. <laughs> Nice, Kazuya. Yes. Oh, Tekken Bowl is insanely good. If they had... If they were to sell a standalone Tekken Bowl from this game on Steam, I would certainly buy it for maybe even up to $30 online play. This version of Tekken Bowl. I know it's in Tekken 7, but it's not as good in Tekken 7. The visuals still look good for you guys. I didn't bother to actually double check when I switched to the PS2 here. 40i signal instead of 240p. It's good? Okay, good. If I had the money, I'd like to buy a retro tank because apparently it upscales the PS2 stuff better. You know, like interlaced content. I think of the amount of PS2 games I actually stream and probably would be unnecessary. Alright boys. Let's put on our suits. Oh yeah. Round one. Yeah. 
put under a velvet purple suit. Round two, fight! Oh, Ascot. Fred from Scooby-Doo. Who, who wears an Ascot? That leads up on when the levy breaks, drum break coming in here. That's sampled a million times, but pretty notable to hear it in a video game. Taken away from me. There you go. Yeah, it's cool. It's a cool design. They brought her back for a second too and kind of eliminated any mystery about her perhaps being Kazuma. Giving him some shit earlier for not being as ripped as he is in those later games, but I'm good. I'm good. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for, Tekken Bowl. So, you actually have different stats and abilities based on the characters you choose, which is a pretty cool big spell. So you'll be playing as one of the Jack characters for his immense strength and literal laser targeting. Then bring Law along. How does Roger do? Not great, but we'll, sure, we'll bring him along. The lols, why not? 
Basically, every character has like a different uh, percentage of strength and control for the different. So basically, when you're setting up your shot, you have your aim, and you tap X to lock in your spin. And for the really strong characters like Jack here, it's going nuts, so it's hard to time it. You want to get it in the middle. Bar for power. The other characters have a more reasonable spin curve. Jack, he's got the Terminator vision. <laughs> he's got a <coughs> Excuse me. He's got a cube in his vision. You know how he's serious. But you're at a 7 10 split. Kangaroo can't bowl, who would have thought? The kangaroo wearing boxing gloves has a hard time. The thing is with Jack, he's almost too powerful. So those pins don't go flying to knock over the others like you'd want. They're just decimated. Questionable. You saw that pin. You saw that pin intersect with those ones on the the left there. Why didn't they get knocked over? Huh? What's up with that? Yeah, all right. Take it. That's good. Blender animation every time he has to simulate the bowl. That's good, Mouse. That's funny. Oh, no! Oh, it worked out. I still got a strike. I want to know, how can we organize a Tekken Bowl tournament on this channel? The important question. I want a big bowl tournament. Cash prize. Maybe even a real trophy. Oh no! 156. Pathetic! All right. Suggestions for next set of characters. Tell me. Who runs the pants? Who's the king of the lane? Tell me. Alright, Kuma? Who else? Why did they make this? Because it's fun. And good. <laughs> what guy bull? 
Uh, I think you're referring to Moko Jean, and that's a good question. Because in the regular gameplay, he's randomized for his moveset between the rest of the characters, so maybe it's the same thing with Tekken Bowl. Maybe it's randomized between all the different characters and their bowling stats. But do I play as Tetsujin, the metal man, or Mokujin, the wooden man? Metal or wood? Wood. Mokujin. Oh yeah. <laughs> wood is good. He does have round hands. Oh, I picked female Moko Jean. That's fine. Birch tree Moko Jean. Now we can see that Kuma's got all of the disadvantages of Jack with none of the advantages. Doesn't have the laser sight. Has the crazy fast spin shot. Let's see. Oh my god. Got a little rose growing out of her head. That's cute. Yes! Yeah, this is... This is a good track. This is I use, I think. Randomized. That spin and power meter was way faster than it was last time. So just like the regular fighters. Too strong. Same thing with Jack. Those pins don't have any kind of recoil. They just go flying. They go intentionally weak. Now we're in Yoshimitsu mode. See the wooden sword? Yes! Money on this. We're gonna have a big tech and tag bowl tournament. And we're gonna have money involved legally. <laughs> Way off. Good God. Terrible score. Absolute atrocious. But what would you expect? It's a bear and a guy made out of wood. <laughs> of course they did terribly. 
All right, one more. Here's the last batch. Build. Werewolf girl. Alright, trying to go with law. Werewolf girl, aka unknown. dancing back there. She's sappy. It's kind of the same thing as Mocha Jean, but the multiple styles that are loaded at random. No! things where full power isn't necessarily what you're after, you know? Yeah, basically what it comes down to is you want balanced characters. Like Law, or Paul, or Jean. Yeah. Ooh. The dreaded 710 split. Can a werewolf girl pick up the slack? <laughs> no, she cannot. <laughs> going over there. gone bowling. My god. Thinking about that is making me sad. <sighs> Spare music to me sounds almost like a Donkey Kong Country little motif. You know, you just found some kind of like banana power up or something. 148. Not bad. Not bad.
One more. One more. Vote for two more characters. Also, listen to this. I'm gonna degas the monitor. Ready? Yeah. Monster ogre form. Who do you vote for? Troop says Kunimitsu. Kunimitsu is a, a lady, by the way. Kunimitsu is... Yoshimitsu Yoshi Yoshimitsu's rival. <laughs> Didn't you know that? Duh. Oh, this is the best track in the game. Perfect. This is the best track for bowling. Sausage on that hot dog. Oh my god! Terrible! the worst possible combination of characters to get up, I think. No good. She had a pen.
under 100. My god. The worst one yet. Junk. Atrocious. So. It's probably enough Tekken Bowl. But there's one more game to play this evening. One more fighting game. A masterpiece. An ultimate pinnacle of the fighting game experience. I think we all know what it is. I think we all know what's coming. And if you don't, well, prepared to have your mind blown. Oh shit, hold on a sec. We're going to have your mind blown in progressive scan. <laughs> there we go. 480p, not 480i. On the greatest console known to man. <laughs> the second Dreamcast. Now, I wish I could play some Virtual Fighter. I don't know. I'm almost tempted to give it another shot. I'll try one more time after this. I'll try some more Virtual Fighter too. Yonicom Developments Limited Entertainment. But I almost fear I might have to bust out the screwdriver and tighten up like the ribbon connections on my Saturn. So I can actually play some virtual fighter. Sad. What's the one with the ridiculous cliff ending? That's this game. That's the ending and character I'm gonna be playing as. Jax. Choose your destiny. <laughs> Fight! This is gonna be the right one, I promise. Jax is the best ending of the game. Basically... Jax, Sonia, and Jarek all share kind of similar endings, but with different lengths. Sonia is the shortest, and then I think Jarek is just the same thing expanded, and then Jax is the same thing, but all of it. Also, I'd like to remind everyone that I'm playing on the Sega Dreamcast right now, a video game system released two years before the PS1, uh, PS2 that is capable of 480p for most of its games instead of just a small fraction. Because Sega... Actually, as a matter of fact, let me make sure we're operating here in the best possible looking. Round one, fight! 240p, hold on. There we go. Should look a little nicer. <laughs> Probably the lamest Mortal Kombat character of all time. 
I mean, this is the guy that replaced Kano. Similar move set, representing the Black Dragon clan. So what do we got? A guy with a soul patch. Come on. here probably honestly has my favorite soundtrack of any of the classic MK games. Dan Forden. He never compromised. He never half-assed it. Maybe if some of his other development team members did, he certainly did not. Jarek wins. Round two. Fight! So what I think I'm going to do is switch to other characters other than Jax. Until I get the Shinnok and then I'll switch it back to Jax so we can get the one Fight! <laughs> flagrant disregard for basic human anatomy in this game is really good. Fight. Kind of thing like in Mortal Kombat 12 or whatever makes me feel like they should have like Anton Shigor as a downloadable character. Right in. <laughs> What's the most you ever lost on a coin to us? Round one, fight! <laughs> bent backwards. A constant theme in MK4. Win. Good stuff. Round two. Fight! <laughs> No big deal, I just bet your knee like 90 degrees backwards. Round one, fight! so good though. Seriously. Listen to the MK4 soundtrack on its own. It's fantastic. Finish her! Oh, 
Flawless victory. Flawless Round victory. Two. Fight! <laughs> Probably the coolest classic. <laughs> no pun intended. Probably the coolest classic MK character, other than Scorpion. Just love all the stuff with the Link Kuei. Ancient clan of Chinese assassins. All right, time for Jax. Let's do it. One fight. Again, because I'm out of continues. No! Came out the same year as Soul Calibur. Oh, what do you want to buy? You want to play Soul Calibur? You want to play Mortal Kombat Gold? Finish her! Back to Jack, so we get some Shinnok. Round one, fight! <laughs> Round 
He was really on fire. I mean, he just kept getting better and better. But between like MK3, MK Mythology Sub Zero, and MK4 here, I don't think he was really at his peak. Onichi wins. Round two. Fight. <laughs> Get the ending, I'll be sure to turn it up. Round one. Fight! Stop exiting, huh? Okay. One set of arms to hold him in place. I use my other set of arms to beat the absolute shit out of him. Round two. Fight! Time to switch to our man, Jax. Round one, fight! Well, 
Shinnok's a joke. Fight! Ready for the greatest ending in fighting game history? Enjoy. Going somewhere, Jarek? Jax! I thought you were going to- Thought I was what? Dead? Like my partner you just tossed off the cliff? I'm- I'm sorry, Jax. Please, don't drop me. Wait, I, I promise. Too late, Jarek. You can't drop me. You have to uphold the law. You have to arrest me. Wait, wait, this is brutality. You can't do it. Wrong, Jarek. This is not a brutality. This is a fatality. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So good. Climbs back up. Yeah, that's that's the Sony ending. Can you imagine working at Midway while this was being developed? Immaculate. Incredible stuff. Indeed. I really want to figure out what the hell's going on with my Saturn though. I really wanted to play some Virtual Fighter. Don't make me bust out the screwdriver, Sega. I'd love to end tonight on a Virtual Fighter 2 run. That would be nice. Hey, Dan, should the piece of music be long enough that it actually is, you know, long enough to cover the credits? Now nah, it's cool. Just have it start looping in the last, like, three seconds. <sighs> All right, I'm going to... I want to get the Saturn thing going here. Let me give this one more shot. And if it doesn't work, we'll play Tekken 2 to wrap the night up. I know this has been a very long combination of streams. I mean, this has been a long stream in itself, but then I played Contra 3 earlier. But it's been a long week, my friends. 
Actually, you know what I think the problem is here? Is it as simple as me not hitting the right button to load the ISO? Let's see. Okay, so the problem for the Saturn stuff may have in fact been, and I'm not joking here, me pressing the wrong button when it came to loading the ISO. Uh, this is very embarrassing for all parties involved, so let's just ignore it and move on. <laughs> Put this to uh, easy because this game is brutal. Four twenty AM. There you go, bro. Fight one. Ready. Go. So, for reference, this game came out in 1995. Ready, go! And <clears throat> we were playing Tekken 3 earlier. That came out in 1998. Psycho was definitely ahead of the game. These character models. Mouse, you're getting break core because you listen to Vidish and Snares! The king of break core. Uh, so now that I figured out what the hell the problem was with the Saturn, should I still play this the samurai game after this? Or do you just want to see Virtual Fighter? Yeah, in Virtual Fighter 2 here, Ready. if you get, it's similar to Dead or Alive, you know, which obviously came later, but if you get knocked off the platform, you lose. Lose all your health or get knocked off the platform. God, the soundtrack is good. Turn it about 20 minutes from now. Yeah, I should probably wrap it up right about then. Been streaming now for over three hours. Is this the one with the moon jumps? It sure is. I mean, there's lots of classic fighting games that have moon jumps, but check this out. Ready? Pilots me. Woo! Yeah, headbutts. I'll show you as soon as I get a chance. Like this? Oh, not quite, but that was a good one. This is so good. Some people get Virtua Fighter shit for having kind of like a blasé for presentation, but I, I think it's really good. It is definitely more generic, but in a good way, I feel. Tekken 
A lot of the OG Tekken guys came from Ritual Fighter. Ready, go! There's actually some cut characters from Virtual Fighter 1 which later ended up in Virtual Fighter. Kind of crazy. Like there was a guy, basically, it was Kazuya. And the gloves and everything. Back to the Saturn, back to the stick. There's your headbutt. Jeffrey is absolutely nuts in Virtual Fighter 2. I think they toned him down a bit in the 2.1 patch, but... Which actually, you have the option of, of choosing in this game on the Saturn. And how many game... how many fighting games... How many games in general can you name that give you that choice? Hey, which patch do you want to play on in terms of difficulty balancing? Or just like, general gameplay balancing? Which patch do you want to play on? This game lets you do that. Yeah, Jeffrey here and base to Saturn is kind of nuts. Yeah, Ring Out is pretty OP. Fight, Ready, go! You think you would take some damage when you try and use one of those you know, attacks without it connecting, but now you're all set. You try and do like the air headbutt and then just land and break your neck. I mean, he's landing on his head. You think I would be death if you miss with that? Uh. 
His neck is broken. Fight's over. It's like the man who trains nothing but his neck muscles. Fight! One! Ready! This is the best track in the game. I'm gonna try and make this last so we can hear it. Your theme is really good. Man, nice. Actually, I did that to a guy once, really. We both fell over. It's kind of funny. <laughs> oh my God. I haven't been in a real fight since I was like 15. So, I don't know. I can't share any cool stories. Sorry. Of that, of that variety, anyway. Plenty of stories of other situations. Mostly involving the ladies. <laughs> no, not fighting. Oh! Slow mo. No, no. Fight! Two! Ready! Go! That's alright. You still win. It's just a bonus stage. Last game of the evening. It's time to finally get the Samurai Spirits. Let's check it out. So this one is actually by SNK. Another one of their 2D fighters. This is the one that requires the one meg ram cart, as my Saturn is requesting here.
no, the real thing, though, is making the system detect the cart. And this is the kind of thing that when you emulate a game system, you usually don't have to worry about. Certain other things, sure. But something like this. Not so much. Yeah, the underwater stuff, quality. All right, here we go. Samurai Showdown 4, Amakusa's Revenge by SNK. Shiwa, Classic SNK action. I'm not super familiar with this series, but from what I understand, the most high level regarded ones are typically the first game and the fourth game here. And because this is extremely hard, I'm gonna turn the difficulty down all the way. Fair and square. One unusual thing about this game is that it has a lot of silence in place of background music, just to be more, I guess, atmospheric during the fights. Traditional <laughs> Sakura. It's all about balancing those hits. Yes, Alucard. That's our boss. <laughs> I 
Yeah, some of the dialogue translations are interesting. I have to wonder. Top notch sprite art there. This is really beautiful. What'd you miss? I guess it depends on how long you've been gone. Basically, just some uh, Samurai Spirits 4. It's kind of like 2D Bushido Blade. Uh, not really. You still have a pretty traditional health system in this, you know, 2D fighter kind of thing compared to Bushido Blade. No lethal strikes like that can. Victory. Denouti. Nihonme. Two. I'm still learning the ropes of this game. I don't entirely understand the mechanics with the controls. That's okay. Lovely presentation. She actually has some background music in her stage, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it's like JRPG time music. Oh, my 
Too easy. Yeah, what's the what was the most recent Samurai Showdown game? I think there's been some 3D entries. I think there's some even some available on uh, Steam, like modern entries. I'm not sure though, I haven't checked into this at all. This is the first one I've really tried. Obama! You know what I want right now? I want a big bowl of tikka masala. That's some nice garlic naan. That's what I want. Let me just see how like the close I, as close as I can get to that after I finish the stream. With what I have in my kitchen. Speaking of Jubei, I've been thinking about playing some Onimusha 2 recently. In fact, I almost purchased a copy on eBay, and then I walked into my retro room and I looked at my shelf and realized, no way, I still have that game. I don't need to buy that. Play some Onimusha 2. Good game. These games are so underrated. Capcom, what are you doing? Sleeping on this series. The remaster of Odebisha 1 they released in 2019 apparently sold like absolute dog water though, so that series might be dead now, unfortunately. Sold less than like 500,000 copies, I think, worldwide across four platforms. PS4, Xbox, and Switch, and PC. <laughs> That remaster, they had to do an entirely new soundtrack too, because the composer originally for the game was the same guy who did the Resident Evil director's cut and several other, you know, soundtracks in that era. Basically, the guy was a total fraud. He was lying about being deaf. Like so he wanted to like present himself as like a modern Japanese Beethoven. In reality, he was not deaf, and he had like several guys like ghostwriting his music. And it all came to a head on the Tokyo Olympics a few years ago, where his ghostwriter was like, "You know what? I'd like credit for my music. You know." I'd like credit for the music I'm writing. So he came out and said, this guy's a phony! He's a fake! So... He was revealed to be a fraud and since then everything's changed. And as a result, that Onimusha remaster has a completely new OST. And I was listening to it because I, I really like that original soundtrack, you know? But I was listening to it, and in particular, I was listening to a piece of music entitled Semenosuke's Theme. And a couple people in the comments I was listening on YouTube said, Hey, go listen to the soundtrack to The Last of the Mohicans. Specifically the track Elk Hunt. Like the Elks, Elk Hunt, Elk Hunt, whatever. So I did, and 
Yes, I was like, oh my god, this is entirely where this track came from. He just copied this piece of music pretty much wholesale. So, I don't know what my point was here, but yes, I'd like to see Onimusha make a return, but also, I guess, if you like the Onimusha 1 soundtrack, go listen to the soundtrack to Last of the Mohegans, because that's basically entirely ripped from that. The film with Daniel, Daniel Day-Lewis, directed by Michael Mann. Yeah, Onimusha 2, I remember liking that quite a bit back in the day. I started it up and played the first few minutes of it. It was really, really good. So, probably be revisiting that one soon. Final battle. <laughs> what? Okay. When he turns into a big fireball, he can't block that. Just so you know. with this guy. Attacks, you know, flashing everything, but that's very little damage. Damn! 
So much damage. Let me try... Poster boy here. Am I crazy if the two health bars totally necessary? I mean, they basically are. I mean, I, it, you could say maybe it adds a slight element of granularity to them, but I don't think it's necessary. Kamaru. I've never seen Bass's point. Final, final boss. Some demon butt. Okay. These animations are really good.
<laughs> oh, it's not over? My god. Alright. The uh, Akuma equivalent, I see. This guy was a true weenie. <laughs> He's like, the guitar is coming in. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah, what? Did you string sake? Out of a very big bowl. Try again. I can see me. That should be the last one. Iza jinjo ni ippon me shou. I do like the blade flashing thing. Years before Soul Calibur. <laughs> Damn. Operation keep him away from his sword. Oh, that's the last of Yes. 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, man. That's, that's, I'm gonna be wrapping this up soon. This is the last fight in the game, I think. So, hopefully this is about it. I'm very tired too, so I'm ready for bed. What's going on here? 
There we go. Let's <laughs> throw that music at the end. Yuri. I think that's finally it. It's over. <laughs> okay. And I'm off. That makes two of us. That's uh, the end, I guess. <laughs> so he's back? Maybe? I don't know. Just one of those samurai things, you know? Go ask Ryu, or Yes I Do, or Detefu Maki, or Ito, or Minichan, or Salt Moon, or Nancy, or Hagi. Ask them about the ending. I don't know. SNKHQ. Give them a call. I'm gonna go to bed now because I'm very tired and I've been streaming now for a very long time. I hope you all have enjoyed the stream and my streams this evening. Played a bunch of Contra and then I played some fighting games which were very fun and good. It was all thanks to this thing I said. <sighs> I'm so tired. <laughs> Bad apple. There's some regular names. Soundtrack's good. I'm gonna go eat some food and then I'm gonna go pass out. But again, I appreciate everyone joining me, whether it was live or after the fact. All my typical BS. Hopefully, you got something entertaining or informative, or hopefully both, out of it. I'll be back next week at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with another stream. And I think next time I'm probably going to be playing just one game instead of several, but we'll see. By the way, I hope everyone has a great rest of your evening, great rest of your week. Please be nice to each other and make the world a better place. Until next time, take care. Adios. Farewell. Goodbye. Thank you.